Hello everyone. In today's session, we'll be discussing about the natural vegetation of India. So let's begin our discussions. So first of all, we need to understand what do you mean by natural vegetation and how do you uh, differ the natural vegetation from artificial vegetation. Okay. So natural vegetation is any vegetation which refers to plant community that has been left undisturbed over a long period of time. This will allow its individual species to adjust themselves to both climate and soil conditions as fully as possible. So any vegetation which grows on its own without any interference of humans intervention that is referred to as natural vegetation. And therefore, when we refer to cultivated crops or fruits, orchards, etc., they do not form a part of natural vegetation but they form a part of vegetation. So in this manner, we can distinguish between natural vegetation and vegetation. So what will comprise natural vegetation? Natural vegetation will include grasses or small plants, such as bushes and scrubs. This will also include tall trees, trees like mango tree, people tree, etc. So these trees, grasses and small plants all comprise the natural vegetation of our country. Now, what are the factors which affect the natural growth of vegetation? Because you find that natural vegetation in one place is not similar to natural vegetation in second place. For example, the natural vegetation found in places like Rajasthan are not similar to natural vegetation found in Himalayas. So what are the conditions? What are the factors which affect the growth of natural vegetation? So natural vegetation, it depends on two factors. The growth depends on first relief and secondly, the growth depends on climate. So what are the relief factors which impact the growth of natural vegetation? The first factor is land. Now nature of land influences the type of vegetation. For example, if the land is level and fertile, it is mainly used for farming. And we constitute it as vegetation, but not as natural vegetation. But if the land is uneven, then there is possibility of growth of grasslands and woodlands, which will constitute as natural vegetation. Similarly, soil is an important factor which impacts the growth of natural vegetation. And therefore, there are different types of soil which are fit for different types of cultivation of vegetation. For example, sandy soil is fit for cactus and thorny bushes. And therefore, the vegetation found in sandy soils, that is in desert areas, are most probably cacti and thorny bushes. But whereas, if the soil is wet and marshy, it is fit for mangrove vegetation. Mangrove vegetation, which is found in coastal areas in wet and marshy soils. Similarly, the second factor which is important for the growth of natural vegetation is climate. Now, climate will include both temperature and humidity and photo period, that is sunlight. So, therefore, the first important factor under climate is temperature and humidity. Now, temperature and humidity determine the character and extent of vegetation. That is, for example, an area with high temperature and high humidity supports evergreen forest. For example, in tropical areas. And as well as the area with high temperature and low humidity supports thorny bushes. For example, in Sahara deserts. Then similarly, another important factor which determines the growth of natural vegetation is photo period or sunlight. Now, photo period depends on latitude, altitude, season and duration of the day as well. So therefore, the vegetation found on equator will not be similar to vegetation found in temperate areas, simply because of the other factors, but also because of the sunlight that is available in equator areas is not similar to the sunlight available in temperate, temperate areas. And hence, trees grow faster in summer because of longer photo period, whereas in winters, the trees shed their leaves. And therefore, also, depending on precipitation, the, if the area gets heavy, snake, uh, heavy rainfall, it is suitable for growth of dense vegetation, for example, the equatorial areas. And that is also determined by 
photo period and hence varies along the different latitudes. So these are some of the important factors which determine the growth of natural vegetation and hence it impacts the spatial variation of natural vegetation, not only across India, but across the world also. Now, as we have learned the different factors which uh, determine the growth of natural vegetation, therefore we can divide the natural vegetation in different types. So because of the different climatic conditions and relief, India has wide range of natural vegetation. And different vegetations are found in different type of climatic areas. For example, the climate of Rajasthan is not similar to the climate of Jammu and Kashmir. So therefore, any district of Rajasthan, for example, Jaisalmer, Pikaner, Jaipur, etc. So these districts of Rajasthan will be having different vegetation compared to some districts of Jammu and Kashmir. For example, Dras, Kargil, or Leh. So these districts will be having completely different vegetation as compared to the extreme deserts of Rajasthan. So based on these conditions that we have studied, the vegetation of India can be distributed into five categories. So what are those five categories? Those five categories are tropical evergreen forest. Then second category is the tropical deciduous forest. Third category is the thorny bushes. And fourth category are the mountain vegetation. And finally, the fifth category are the mangrove forest. So we'll be discussing about all of them one by one. And this is the complete natural vegetation map of India. So the natural vegetation map of India segregates the natural vegetation into different types. So for example, first vegetation is the alpine vegetation shown in purple color. Now, alpine vegetation along with mountain subtropical and temperate vegetation. These both combinedly form the mountain vegetation of India. So these are the mountain vegetation areas of India. Then similarly, the area shown in blue, these are the areas of mangrove forest. So these are the second category of forest of India. Then the area shown in yellow, all these areas shown in yellow, they are the tropical dry deciduous forest of India. And the ones shown in light green, they are the moist deciduous forest of India. Then vegetation shown in lemon yellow and the orange vegetation, these areas comprise the thorny bushes of India. And the ones shown in dark green, these are the evergreen forest of India. So this is a broad classification across all over India, how we divide the natural vegetation of India and we'll be studying about all of these one by one. So let's discuss about the tropical evergreen forest first. So tropical evergreen forests are found in areas with very, very heavy rainfall. So understood that if uh, they are found in areas with a very heavy rainfall, they won't be found in uh, conditions such as uh, desert conditions. They are found in areas with rainfall exceeding 300 centimeters and a very brief dry season. Now, very important characteristic of tropical evergreen forests are that they are very well stratified with layers closer to grounds and are also covered with shrubs and creepers. This is also followed with short structured trees followed by tall variety of trees. So because there are layer of trees, short trees, and long trees. So it appears that they are having a structured layer where there are small trees and there are high trees also and which can vary up to height of about 60 meters. So therefore they appear to have a layered structure, a multi-layered structure. While they are not having multi-layered structure but just the difference in the height of the different trees. And different heights are called as different names. For example, the shorter ones are called as the shrub layer, while the bigger ones, as, uh, relatively bigger ones are called the young trees, while the trees at the highest level are called as canopy and the emergent layer. So this is just a structured layer of the evergreen forest. Now they can grow up to great heights and they do not shed leaves. And some of the important species of trees found in this forest include rosewood, mahogany, ani, ebony, etc. So these are some of the very important species found in the evergreen forest. 
Now, what are some of the important wildlife species which are pre present in these forests? They may include elephant, monkeys, lemur, trees, deers, etc. And also, one horned rhinoceros is a species which is found in the jungles of Assam and West Bengal. So, you should know about some of the important species also which are present in these particular states in which there is spread of tropical evergreen forest. Now, under uh, evergreen forest itself, there is another category which we call as semi evergreen forest. Now, semi evergreen forests occur in areas which are having rainfall lesser than 300 centimeters, which was the criteria for the tropical evergreen forest. But they are having rainfall between 250 to 300 centimeters annually. So, this is an important criteria for the presence of semi evergreen forests. These are found in relatively lesser rainy parts of these regions and they have a mixture of evergreen and moist deciduous trees. So, they are not having tropical evergreen tree species, but they have a mixture of evergreen and moist deciduous trees. Now, the undergrown climbers provide an undergreen character to these forests and the main species of these trees, uh, of these uh, forests are white cedar, hollow and kale. So, these are found in relatively less linear parts of India. So, these are the two categories under evergreen forests. Now, what is the distribution of evergreen forests? Now, the tropical evergreen forests are found in southern parts of western Ghats of Kerala, that is, southern parts of western Ghats of Kerala. They are also found in parts of Karnataka. Now, these are the main distribution of the evergreen forest. And they are also found in states of northeast India and bit lesser rainier parts, that is, along the uh, Sundarbans, along the Andaman and Nicobar and along a stretch of small stretch of eastern ghats the tropical evergreen and semi evergreen forests are also found so these are the areas shaded in dark green which show the distribution of tropical evergreen and semi evergreen forest of india now the second category is tropical deciduous forest now tropical deciduous forests are found in areas having rainfall between 200 cm to 70 cm and they are categorized into moist deciduous and dry deciduous. So they are categorized into two categories. And tropical deciduous forests are also called as monsoon forests of India. And they are found in lesser rainier parts as compared to the evergreen forest. So let's discuss their two categories. The first one are the moist deciduous forests, which are found in relatively more rainier parts. And therefore, they are found in areas receiving rainfall between 200 to 100 centimeters. Now, what are some of the most important dominant species of these forests? So, some of the important species found are bamboos, sal, sisham, sandalwood, khair, kusum, arjun, and mulberry. And there are other species also, but the very important aspect is that they are commercially important species. And hence, the moist deciduous forests are one of the most exploited commercially forests of India. Now, they are distributed across the central India, eastern India, and even the low ranges of Himalayas. And some of the species found are Indian tiger, wolf, dhole, and sloth bear. These are some of the important species which are found in most deciduous forests. Now, second category under the deciduous forest are the dry deciduous forests. And these are found in areas having relatively lesser rainfall. That is between 100 cm and 70 cm. And the important species found here are teak, sal, peeper, neem, etc. And some of the other species also found here are tendu, palas, amaltas, bale, khair, and excel wood. Now, tendu leaves are minor forest produce, which are collected by tribals of Odisha. So, this is an important species of trees from which the tribals of Odisha, they tend to take the minor forest produce, they collect the tendu leaves. So you should know also about the, some of the important species and what are their advantages, why they are used, what is their significance. And very important challenge is that this region has been cleared for cultivation and some parts are used even for grazing. So therefore, these are one of the most exploited and converted forests of India. So they have been cleared for cultivation and they are also being cleared for grazing. Now, where are the distribution of dry deciduous and moss deciduous forests? So, the area shown 
with star marked. These are the areas which constitute the deciduous forest of India, including both the dry and moist deciduous forest of India. So they are found uh, in the states such as Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Maharashtra. So these are some of the states where the deciduous forests of India are found. Now the third category of forests, the third category of the natural vegetation of India are the thorny forests and the scrubs. And as the name suggests, they are found in areas with very less rainfall, very less rainfall, rainfall less than 50 centimeter, 70 centimeter, very less rainfall. So these forests are found in those areas itself. Now these consist of variety of grasses and shrubs and they are devoid of leaves generally or the leaves have modified into thick leaves and uh, so as to avoid the evaporation of water. Now some of the important species found are baboon, bear, wild date palm, khar, neem, hejri, palas, etc. And there is also growth of tasoki grass. Grows as an undergrowth, as an undergrowth, and they grow up to in heights of generally two meter or one meter. So these are some of the important species of thorny forest. Now, what are the adaptations? The adaptations because of the climatic conditions of the forest of the deserts. Now, these trees are scattered and have long roots penetrating deeply into the soil so as to uh, order to get moisture. The stems are also succulent and they conserve water. Leaves are mostly thick and small to minimize evaporation. So these are some of the adaptations of the thorny plants and bushes. Now, what are some of the important wildlife species which are found here? This includes the desert scorpion, the red fox, the mongoose chinkara, the black buck and the Indian bustard, etc. So these are some of the important species which are present in the thorny forest and scrubs. And these are some of the endangered species also for which conservation, uh, conservation centers have also been established. Now they are found in extremely dry regions. So they are found in the desert of Rajasthan. They are found in the plateau interiors. So these are some of the areas where the thorny bushes and scrubs, that is the thorny forest of India are found. So this is the spatial distribution of thorny forest of India. Now the fourth category is the mountain or the mountain vegetation. These are synonymously used for mountain vegetation. Now mountain vegetation is found in the areas where the temperature is very low, altitudes are high. And as one goes up in altitude, the vegetation changes. The vegetation changes drastically. So from gradual change from, uh, for example, in the lower areas of Shiva lakes, one may found the deciduous forest. But as one moves gradually towards a height of 3,000, 4,000 meters, gradually there is a, a change in vegetation, which will include the change in vegetation like pine, chir, diodar, etc., which is the mountain vegetation towards greater heights, towards alpine grasslands. So this is a gradual shift as one goes up in altitude. Now the mountain vegetation of India can be classified into two types. That can be classified into northern mountain forest and the southern mountain forest. Now the northern mountain forest, they are found in states like Himachal Pradesh, Jammu Kashmir, Uttarakhand, etc and also in the Eastern Himalayas. Now in the Himalayan regions, what happens as one goes up a higher in the altitude, there is a succession of vegetation from the tropical to the tundra, which is due to the change in altitudes. Now what are some of the important species? Important species include cheer, pine, deodar, etc. And ultimately as one goes up higher to the altitudes, for example, say 3000, 4,000 meter heights, through shrubs and scrubs, they merge into alpine grasslands at elevations above the snow line. Now, what is the importance of these alpine grasslands? These alpine grasslands, they are used by 
ट्राइबल पीपल्स ट्राइबल विच आर फाउंड इन स्टेट्स ऑफ जम्मू कश्मीर हिमाचल प्रदेश एक्सेट्रा ट्राइब सच एस गुजर्स बकरवाल भोतियाज एंड गदीज they use these alpine grasslands for transhumans so they take their sheep their cattle etc for grazing and they use it for transhumans while in winters they migrate to down plain areas so these alpine grasslands are very important for transhumans of tribal people residing in these states now what are some of the common animal species found here these include kashmiri stag spotted deer wild sheep tipton antelope yak snow leopard etc so these are some of the important wildlife species which are found in northern mountain forest of india now what is the second category second category are the southern mountain forest which are found in western ghats the nilgiris the higher slopes of of western ghats nilgiris etc so as they are closer to tropics and only about 1500 meter above the sea level the vegetation is primarily temperate in the higher regions and subtropical on the lower regions of the western ghats especially in the states like kerala tamil nadu and karnataka now very important forest found here are the shola forest the shola forest are the temperate forest which are found in nilgiris and amar lai and palani hills so these are very important special category of forest which are found only in this particular region so they are called as the sholas now some of the other important trees of this forest which include magnolia laurel cinchona and wattle and these forests are very important natural vegetation of india so the spatial distribution of these forest are in the northern plain in the northern mountains northern areas they are found in the northwest himalayan states in states like jammu kashmir himachal pradesh uttarakhand and also in the eastern states such as arunachal pradesh sikkim and they are also found in the slopes of western ghats so this is the distribution of not in the entire but in parts of western ghats so this is the distribution of mountain forest of india now the fifth and very important category of natural vegetation found in india are the mangrove forest the mangrove forest are also called as the littoral and swamp forest and they are found in areas of coast which are influenced by high tides so these are the mangrove forest and they are found in the areas of coast along the salt marshes tidal creeks mud flats and estuaries so they have roots which are also standing above the water now very important uh, uh, characteristic of the mangrove forest are that they are salt tolerant species of plants and hence found also along the coastal areas of india and sundari is a very important species of trees which is found in the mangrove forest and because of the sundari tree which is present in the mangrove forest sundarban mangroves have been named and what are some of the important species found in this forest some of the important species found are royal bengal tiger crocodiles gharials etc so these are some of the important wildlife species found in mangrove forest now mangrove play a very important role that is they protect the coast from erosion and therefore they act as barriers due to which they save the coast during the tsunami of 2004 wherever the mangrove forest were present there the destruction due to tsunami in 2004 was very less as compared to areas which had which did not had mangrove forest so where they are found in so when we are studying about the mangroves we should also know the specific names of the mangroves that are uh, found in india so they are found in the coastal areas of india and some of the important names are sundarban sundarban mangrove forest they are found along the mahanadi delta the krishna estuary they are called the pichavaram and muthapet in tamil nadu so they are found in the coastal areas of india so once we know about the natural vegetation of india let's understand the economic importance of natural vegetation 
Now the economic value of the services provided by forest worldwide is estimated to be about 16.2 trillion dollars, which includes the different ecosystem services provided by the natural vegetation. For example, they provide us with wood, they provide us with medicines, cosmetics, food, etc. Now natural vegetation hosts about 80% of the all terrestrial biodiversity and which is very important function of the natural vegetation of India. They help in regulating the hydrological cycle and they also act as carbon sink and also helps in addressing the global warming and they also protect us from disaster. For example, the mangrove forest, for example, the mountain forest protect us from the avalanche, landslides, etc. So different natural vegetation, they protect us from different disasters also. Now, what are some of the important ecosystem services provided to us by the natural vegetation? They are categorized into provisioning services, regulating services, supporting services, and cultural services. So what are the provisioning services? Provisioning services simply means the goods provided by the forest ecosystem. So what are the goods provided by forest? <clears throat> they can include food. That can include the fiber, timber, freshwater, etc. So the goods provided by the forest ecosystem, they constitute the provisioning services. The second category of services provided by the natural vegetation includes the regulating services. So what are the regulating services? Regulating services means the benefits obtained from the regulation of ecosystem processes. So what are the benefits that we obtain? For example, air quality improvement, climate regulation, biological control, pollination, etc. So these are some of the important regulating services provided by the vegetation of India. Now, what are the supporting services? The third category of services provided are the supporting services. Supporting services simply means the key ecosystem services necessary for production of all other ecosystems. For example, the soil formation, nutrient cycling, primary production or biodiversity. So these are the key ecosystem services which are necessary for production of all other ecosystem services, such as the regulating services, etc. And the fourth category of services provided are the cultural services. So cultural services include the non-material benefits obtained from the forest ecosystem. For example, spiritual and religious values. For example, for uh, educational and research purposes, aesthetic values and ecotourism and recreation. So these are some of the non-material benefits and constitute the cultural services provided by vegetation. Now, what are the challenges on forest? What are the threats? Why the degradation is happening? The first and foremost important factor for degradation of forest are the fuel wood and water collection. So for example, more than 200 million tons of fuel wood is consumed in country out of which about 58 million tons comes from forest. So for that, the forests are cut and the forests are getting degraded. Now, fodder is also collected by local people in addition to the grazing of cattle in the forest and due to which about 200 million tons of green fodder is collected annually. So this is very important uh, reason for the threat on forest. The second reason for degradation of forest are the forest fire. Now, as per the reports, 54% of the country's forests are prone to forest and 90% of the forest fires are human induced. So this is a major factor for degradation of forest. For example, the recent Simli Pal forest fire in Odisha, in which heavy damage was done to forest. Then third important reason for pressure and threat on forest are the pest diseases and invasive species. For example, saltic and sisu suffer from disease. For, and there are other invasive species which are also impacting the forest of India. For example, Lantana, Parthenium, Eupithorium. So these are some of the invasive species which impact the forest of India. So these threats, the threats, they are major challenge in forest management. Why? Because loss of forest it leads to habitat fragmentation, diversion of resources, and encroachment. Then it leads to reduction in forest productivity. Then rural energy sources 
they are inadequate and lack to viable alternatives so they are unsustainable in nature then fourthly the grazing pressure is very high because we are losing the grazing lands and therefore this is a major challenge in forest management because of the non regulation because of lack of surveillance now because of increasing population also there is a challenge in the forest management because the forest areas are getting converted into settlements also then more importantly the plant the areas of vegetation they are getting converted in into areas of regeneration and enrichment and that is leading to unsustainable tourism activities also and unsustainable use of forest resources then lastly and more importantly shifting cultivation is creating pressure on forest in different parts of india for example in northeastern states so they if for the forest lands are getting converted into agricultural lands so these are some of the important challenges in forest management now because of the various threats that are on the uh, forest of india what are the different conservation methods what are the different policies of india for the conservation of the forest of india so first and foremost important national forest policy of 1988 that targets towards 33% of the total geographical area under forest cover so this is the for the forest policy of india it aims to conserve at least 33% of the total geographical area under forest cover now there are other initiatives which have been taken for the conservation of natural vegetation which includes national afforestation program green india mission agroforestry social forestry and joint forest management which also includes the involvement of local communities that is the local community participation now there are different acts also which aims toward conservation of forest which includes the forest conservation act 1980 environmental protection act the biodiversity act and the forest right act so these acts also aims towards conservation of biodiversity now for conserving the flora and fauna in totality biosphere reserves have been created which aims towards the ecosystem conservation principle so they, there are different biosphere reserves which have been established across different parts of the country for example the gulf of manar the nilgiris the nokrek the great nicobar etc so these are some of the important biosphere reserves which have been established across india now financial and technical assistance is also provided to botanical gardens by government since 1992 and this is the ex situ conservation of vegetation now not only the vegetation is been conserved but the wildlife in the forest is also being conserved and different projects have been uh, have been uh, there for conservation of wildlife in the forest for example project tiger project rhino project great indian bustard etc so these projects have been there to protect the wildlife in the forest and similarly for the ex situ conservation national parks wildlife sanctuaries zoological gardens have been set up to take care of our natural heritage now let's discuss something about the state of india forest report 2019 which has given some critical inputs about the forest resources the natural vegetation of india so when we compare the state of forest report we will call this as fri so if we compare the fri fri 2017 and fri 2019 there is an increase of 5188 square kilometer in the total forest and tree cover of india and out of this the increase in forest cover has been 3976 square kilometer and that of tree cover is 1212 square kilometer so therefore there has been increase in total forest and tree cover of india now re Change increase in forest cover has been observed in open forest, followed by very dense forest and moderately dense forest. So, open forest, very dense forest, and moderately dense forest have seen an increase in forest cover in the following sequence. Now, the top three states showing increase in forest cover are Karnataka, followed by Andhra Pradesh and Kerala. So, these are three states which have shown. 
the top most increase in forest cover and area wise area wise largest forest cover in country are in madhya pradesh and andhra pradesh chatisgarh odisha and maharashtra so you can give it as an acronym macom that is madhya pradesh and andhra pradesh chatisgarh odisha and maharashtra so these are the states having area wise largest forest uh, forest cover in our country now this was regarding the area wise coverage whereas in terms of forest cover as percentage of total geographical area the top 5 states are mizoram and natural pradesh meghalaya manipur and nagaland so these are the area, states having the maximum forest cover as a percentage of total geographical area now but the mangrove cover in country now mangrove cover in country is 4975 square kilometer and there has been increase of 54 square kilometer in mangrove cover as compared to the fri assessment of 2017 and top 3 states showing increase in mangrove cover are gujarat maharashtra and odisha so these are the three states which have shown the maximum increase in the mangrove cover so this was a discussion about the state of forest report 2019 so in today's session we tried to cover about the natural vegetation of india its spatial distribution what are some of the threats to the natural vegetation of india how the vegetation can be conserved and also something regarding to the state of forest report 2019 so this was all about the today's session thank you